lower intake most of the time you don't then you're going to disconnect everything electrical connected to the engine including probably the crank position sensor depending on how that's mounted usually that's mounted to the block so you need to remove that um, you're going to want to remove everything electrical remove most of your accessories as much as you can basically make it so you can take it out and then after you have all that disconnected you're going to pop off your headers now on this side, I did fully remove the header even from the cat. On this side, I was able to just squeeze it by. I just removed it from the head, removed my header. Simple. There's all the electrical I disconnected before I got the engine out. Um, you're going to want to take off the AC compressor. Um, that'll make it so you can remove the engine if you don't want to disconnect all kinds of lines and stuff. Just unbolt that from the block, move it away. Same with the power steering pump. Just move that out of the way. Um, it's pretty much it for the front and the top of the engine. Then you're going to want to go to the back of the engine. And after everything is disconnected from the engine, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the engine supported by an engine hoist. Uh, put something underneath your transmission to hold it up, usually a transmission jack or maybe just a floor jack. I use a strap since this is four-wheel drive vehicle. The transmission, you can lift it up by yourself, so it's honestly no problem to just put a strap under that one. <laughs> After you have the engine supported by a good old engine hoist, you're just going to take out the bolts that connect your uh, transmission bell housing to the engine block. After you have all those bolts removed, then you're going to um, you're going to jack up the engine hoist, maybe another half a jack, just to make sure the weight is supported by that and not the engine mounts. Then what you're going to do is you're going to remove the engine mounts. Uh, the easiest way I found was just to take out the main engine mount bolt. And try to leave the engine mount hooked up to the old block like this when you take it out. Sometimes you need to take it off the block anyways. But if you can just do it with the main bolt for the motor mount, that's probably going to be your easiest bet. And for this other, that's for a Nissan, it's for an import. For something like this uh, Dodge Dakota here, it was actually easier to just unbolt the, trans the engine mounts from the block. Because you can do this bolt, you could take off this bolt and then this bolt, but it's honestly easier to just you do these three smaller bolts that hook up directly to the block. You don't have to remove these engine mounts. They stay in place. They're angled just right so you can get the engine out. Um, it's a lot simpler on something like this. All the electricals up there. You're going to want to move everything out of the way. AC compressor, again, moved out of the way. Uh, what did I do? Uh, there's your power steering pump. I just moved that out of the way. Older trucks like this are definitely going to have a lot more room in the engine bay to remove stuff. But you can still do it on these newer trucks. And as you can see here on the old uh, old Debra here, I was able to leave the whole front end on there. That's because uh, I did take off the heads while the engine was still in the truck. You don't have to do that, but you can. I was able to squeeze it over there. Probably have to take that off when we put the new engine in. And by front end, I mean grill, bumpers, everything. On this truck, however, there was not any room at all basically even with all the radiators the core support the bumpers the grills everything removed here i still had a little bit of difficulty getting it out but it wasn't too bad i just moved the ac condenser out of the way there and this engine especially is a little taller than uh the v8 for some reason i don't know why that i took out of that De out of deborah that engine was smaller than this engine this engine was bigger than that engine uh, so, and for this truck, you may not have to do this for all vehicles, but you might have to drop the diff or remove the oil pan. I just dropped the diff because it was a lot easier. I didn't have to mess with any components on the long block since this isn't my truck. So I just dropped that diff down. It's like, what is it? One, two, three bolts, I think. Three big bolts. That thing just drops down out of the way so the oil pan can clear it. On Deborah there, it's a little different. There's a lot more clearance under there. I'll show you again. There's a lot more clearance, so you definitely don't have to take off the oil pan. Yeah, as you can see, that differential is a lot further down, so you don't have to worry about that. And, uh, oh, yeah, forgot to mention one more thing. Before you pull the engine, you're going to have to take off the hood to gain clearance for the engine hoist. But uh, after you have all that stuff unhooked, you, uh, you just... Crank up on the jack a little bit. Make sure everything's disconnecting. Um, when you, if you're cranking on the engine hoist, and this and you see the transmission start to hit 
this uh, firewall, you're going to want to let off the pressure because that means something is still connected or it's not clearancing the output shaft. On this engine, that was a, that was a big pain because if you can see up here from the aerial view, that output shaft actually sticks out a lot. Sticks out quite a bit from the uh, bell housing there. Uh, there we go. It sticks out a bit, so I had to remove the engine forward quite a bit because the you know the clutch and the fly will also stick out from the engine. So you just gotta wiggle it out when you're pulling on it. You shouldn't have to pull too hard on anything as long as you've got enough lift on it. So just when you're pulling it out, go slowly. If you feel resistance, make sure you look over the whole engine. There's probably something still connected. Um, for this engine, I believe I still. <laughs> I accidentally left the uh, crank position sensor still bolted to the block, so that was holding the engine in place. And then, yeah, you're just going to want to check to see what's holding it if it's not coming out. And uh, on this engine, when I pulled it, I actually did not remove the diff first, so the oil pan was getting caught on that, so I had to put the engine back and remove the diff. That's pretty much how to remove an engine in a nutshell. That's just for my two trucks, but it's pretty universal for most vehicles. It's just different concepts and designs.